Ann Kaplan from Mommy, your mama resource from conception to college, wherever you are in your momming journey, we are here for you. And this week, the theme in the group has been gender. If you were able to see the video I did on Tuesday with Erin Parisi, it was a really special treat. that She um, helped me bust some myths about gender when it comes to kids. And um, yesterday, we talked a little bit about what it feels like and what might be going on for you if you really do have a dog in the race when it comes to whether you're going to have a girl or a boy when you're pregnant. Today is Thursday. Thursday is my tips and tricks day. It's my day where I really talk about how to implement all the stuff that we've been learning this week. And so how do we navigate the world of parenting when our kids are exploring and, you know, breaking all the rules about gender and stuff like that? Um, and I just want to give you guys a few tips that have helped me for sure, especially as I mentioned before, my son Sky is definitely the most curious and exploratory when it comes to gender things. And it's been very, very interesting watching him make everybody's heads turn with all of the clothes that he chooses to wear, the games he likes to play, and the way that he talks about himself. He tells me all the time that when he grows up, he's gonna be a mom. He doesn't wanna have a penis, he's gonna have a vagina. We'll see what happens with all of that stuff. But and I'm just grateful that I am the mom that I am for him. And I'm grateful to have the experience of parenting him because I'm learning so much about all the wide spectrum of parenting experiences one can have. So let me share with you guys some of the tips that I've used for myself with my kids and what I really love when these kinds of stuff come up. Because the first tip I'm going to give you is to recognize that all kids before around ages eight or nine are really in a many, many ways androgynous, hormonally and in the ways that they think, the way that their brain functions even, is almost identical with girls and boys. And so what does that mean? It means that kids are exploring. They're not super um, intrinsically and deeply tied to their gender in many cases. And the behaviors that they show because of that don't actually predict anything about the future, first of all. And second of all, um, the more that we try to control that, just like all the other parenting advice I give you guys um, in this group, whether we're talking about gender or we're talking about temper tantrums, you cannot control your child. Our approach as parents is always wrong-headed when it's coming from the place of trying to change our kids' behaviors, what they're doing, who they are, how they see the world. That's not what... Um, parenting is actually all about and it's actually not possible <laughs> even when you think you're changing your kid it's really because your child decided to change on their own so the same is true for this gender stuff so my first tip to you guys is recognize that it's normal and don't try to change it because you can't okay so the set that kind of segues into my second tip for you guys which is do not make a big deal out of it don't make a big deal out of it to your child but also don't make a big deal out of it to all the other people in your life because it's not a big deal. And the more that we make things a big deal, the more that we um, really transmit this energy of shame and judgment on something that's totally normal. And if it is something that's going to be permanent or long lasting, it's unchangeable for, for our end. So the only thing that can come from us trying to make a big deal out of it and change it is conveying this idea of shame and embarrassment and um, guilt and things like that. And we know as parents that in general, that is not an effective way to raise healthy, happy children. Okay, so the third thing I wanna talk to you guys about when it comes to handling stuff like this is make it clear that to other adults in your child's life and other kids in your child's life, what your philosophy is. Because I can tell you instances where, you know, we knew exactly how we wanted to um, parent Sky. And when he showed interest in taking all of his sister's clothes and stuff like that, I was like, fine by me, but you can't take Gigi's clothes because they don't fit you and you keep tripping and hurting yourself. And also, Gigi doesn't want to give you her clothes. So what did we do? We got out all of the clothes that were his size, and he was able to have in his drawers and dresser half boyish clothes and half girlish clothes if you open sky's drawers you'll see half skirts and half shorts and he can choose but we had to make it clear to the people around us that that was what we were doing for him and with him because when my mother-in-law would come to visit or my mom would come to visit 
they weren't really on the same page or when my kid would go to school and things like that. Or when my older son river was like, mom, I don't think this is right. Everyone's going to make fun of sky. We should make him wear this different clothes. Like I needed to talk to him about this is how I believe is the most healthy way to parent my child. And that's what you need to respect right now. Whether you're a sibling, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, someone in the school, whatever. So make your philosophy known to the people around you. And then the last thing is give your child access to whatever they're interested in. Clothing wise, toys wise, friends, um, activities, all of those things. When your child shows an interest in something, let them pursue it, obviously within safety measures. If they're interested in riding a motorcycle, do not buy them a motorcycle. <laughs> but um, let your child lead, let your kids lead, give them access to the things they want and then let them choose. Don't force anything on them one way or the other when it comes to things that are um, coming from within them and that are about their interests and the things that give them joy. And the last thing I want to say is don't redirect your kids either. When they're starting to play with stuff, like we've been talking about this whole video, it's not about controlling our kids. The growth and change and movement that needs to happen when a child is doing something, whether it's a gender exploration or a new, um, interest that they have that you don't feel comfortable with or whatever, if you don't feel comfortable with it, the change in movement and growth that needs to come is for the parent, not for the child. It's important. It's very, very important that when your child presents him or herself to you with, by, you know, and basically say, Hey, this is who I am, mom. This is who you got when you pulled out of the grab bag of children. This is who you got. This is who I am. It's our responsibility to get to know that person, not to change that person. And that holds true with whatever we're talking about with parenting. I hope that's landing with you guys. I hope that's resonating. And I hope this week has been really interesting to you because it's a new topic. It's a little bit different, but I think it's really, really important. I love you guys so much. I'm really excited to get into December with you guys, the last month in 2018. If you've been struggling with parenting, if you've been feeling frustrated and like you're losing your temper and yelling at your kids or the energy in your family just isn't what you want it to be, it's not too late to make some shifts and get your head on straight so that you can go into 2019 the parent that you want to be. And if that's something that's interesting to you, I really encourage you to keep tuning in in this group because I'm going to be making an announcement pretty soon, sometime next week about some really exciting opportunities you're gonna have in this last month of 2018 to really get ready to start 2019 off on the right foot when it comes to parenting and raising phenomenal, awesome kids and not being miserable while you're doing it. Love you guys so much, have an amazing week and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.